وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول Now we're going to go into inshallah ta'ala the second introduction that we all have to agree upon. These are foundations and principles that I want every single one of us to agree on. The first foundation was what? Every action will be accepted when it meets two criteria, when it meets two conditions. The first one is, is that it has to be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the second is it has to be done in accordance to the sunnah. The second introduction inshallah ta'ala is Al-fardu afdalu min al-nafli The obligatory acts are better than the voluntary acts. The superrogatory acts and the obligatory acts. Which one is better? The scholars extracted from the Quran and the Sunnah that the fard afdalu min al-nafli The obligatory acts are better and greater than the superrogatory acts, the voluntary acts. وَلِذَلِكَ The author Al-Ahdal in his Kitab Al-Fara'id Al-Bahiyya which is a kitab written in Qawaid Al-Fiqiyya he made the book into poetry from the Kitab Al-Ashbah wa Al-Nadair by Jalaluddin Al-Suyuti. So he says وَالْفَرْضُ فِي مَا قَعَدُوهُ أَكْثَرُ فَضْلًا عَنِ النَّفْلِ كَمَا قَدْ ذَكَرُوا قالوا وأجر الفرض زائد على ثواب غيره بسبعين عقلا. He said والفرض فيما قعدوه أكثر. According to the scholars, the obligatory is better and greater than the voluntary act, the superrogatory acts. فضلا من النفل كما قد ذكروا. Now the question here is, what evidence do they have for this? To say that the obligatory act is better than the superrogatory act or the voluntary act. The evidence for that is the hadith Al-Imam Al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih. Al-Imam Al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih min hadith Abi Hurairah. Hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the hadith it says, qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah ta'ala qala. So it's a hadith Qudsi. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he said, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Anyone who wages war on my allies, on the awliya of Allah, anyone who wages war against them, they are in direct war with Allah Azza wa Jalla. And then the hadith says, وَمَا يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ The hadith says that my slave does not come close to me in something more beloved to me, meaning the most beloved thing to me, Allah is saying, that my slave can come closest to me, is what? It is the obligatory act. It is what I made obligatory on him. So the hadith mentioned what? The be most beloved thing to Allah Taala that a slave can get closer to Allah with is what? It's the obligatory act. Then the hadith says, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَكَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلَ حَتَّى أُحِبَّ the voluntary act is then what makes you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it builds a strong bond between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason why I've chosen to speak about this point is because I have found that many people are doing voluntary things, superrogatory things, and they are forsaking the obligatory acts. If you've forsaken the obligatory acts, why are you doing the voluntary acts? وَلِذَلِكَ The scholars they said مَنْ شَغَلَهُ الْفَرْضُ عَنِ النَّفْلِ فَهُوَ مَعْذُورُ وَمَنْ شَغَلَهُ النَّفْلُ عَنِ الْفَرْضِ فَهُوَ مَغْرُورُ Understand this point. Anyone who was unable to do the uh, superrogatory act, anyone who was unable to do the super, superrogatory act. He couldn't do the voluntary act. Why couldn't you do it? Because he was preoccupied with the, with the obligatory. For who are ma'adhurun, he's excused. In the sharia, he's excused. 
a person was unable to combine between the obligatory and the supererogatory. He couldn't do both of them. He hasn't got the strength and the power to do all of that. So he just stuck it with the obligatory. The scholars, they say, مَنْ شَغَلَهُ الْفَرْضُ عَنِ النَّفْلِ فَهُوَ مَعْذُورِ He's excused. وَمَنْ شَغَلَهُ النَّفْلُ عَنِ الْفَرْضِ فَهُوَ مَغْرُورِ As for the individual who the voluntary occupy, preoccupies him from the obligatory, فَهُوَ مَغْرُورٌ He's deceived. That can't happen. How can you pre preoccupy yourself with something that is lower than that which is higher than it? It shows that you don't have true understanding of what the religion is like and what it requires. So the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, mentions that Allah wa Taala, the thing that he loves the most, the thing that is most beloved to Allah, that a slave can get closer to Allah with is what? The obligatory act. Busy yourself with that. Well, you find some people, subhanAllah, when the month of Ramadan enters, they pray Salatul Taraweeh, and they haven't fasted. They haven't fasted. Or, or they are not praying Salah, but they're fasting. Even though, though both of them are obligatory. Like in the Salah and the fasting, which one is greater? Which one is greater? The Salah is greater. The Salah is greater. So within the wajibat, they are not the same. And Within the Sunan, the voluntary acts, they're also not the same. And one of the greatest fiqh Ibn al Qayyim mentions that a person can have, one of the greatest fiqh is to look at two ibadat and know which one is better than which. You look at two ibadah, you have to do one, and you need to know which one is better than which. So, an obligatory act and a voluntary act always give precedence to the obligatory. Once you've done the obligatory and you fulfilled what was obligatory upon you, then you can think about doing the super, supererogatory acts, the voluntary acts. If you've done the wajibat, don't dismiss the nawafil. A lot of people, they dismiss the super, supererogatory acts and they say, look, I just want to do the wajibat. But that itself is very dangerous. Just never looking at the sunnah. You don't look towards the direction of the sunnah. You're always just sticking to the wajibat. You're in trouble. Because your wajibat sometimes may not be good enough. And if you did some sunan and some tatawu and nawafil, it may have helped you in your wajibat. We all know the famous hadith that Imam Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Nasai min hadith Abi Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said the first thing that a slave will be questioned and interrogated on, the first thing you're going to be interrogated on is what? Your salah is the first thing you're going to be interrogated for. The first thing Allah is going to question you the day of judgment is that your salah. Your salah will be looked at. If the person's salah are all good, then he's successful. And if his salah is deficient, so the wajibat, some are missing, he, salah he is missing, a salah he is missing, and he hasn't come with all of it, it will be said, هَلْ لِعَبْدِ مِنْ تطوعين. Go and look, has my slave got any voluntary acts? You see how good it is when you have a supererogatory acts? Your wajibat, is, it was not done with good ruku' so it's not as much salah. You didn't know that. Now you've got your rawatib, your taraweeh, your qiyamul layl, your, your ibadat, that's going to help you now. It's going to come in, it's going to come in aid for you. It's going to help you. It's going to support you. It's going to save you this day and moment that it, you need it. It will be said, unduru look, hal li abdi min tatawu'in fa yukammalu biha. The tatawu' will be taken and it will be completing for you the obligatory act. It will complete it for you. Man taqasa min al faridah And it will fill up the wajibat that was missing from you. I want to mention, inshallah ta'ala, when it comes to the salah, because I was talking about that, two nawafil, two things, I mean, two salahs, which are not obligatory, according to the strongest opinion, 
And the overwhelming majority of scholars, because Al Imam Abu Hanifa believes the first one is obligatory, which I'm going to mention. These two salahs, I would encourage you all to hold on to it and not to miss it. The first one is Al Witr. And I'm going to speak about that inshallah ta'ala. And the second sunnah that I encourage you to hold on to is Sunnatul Fajr. The sunnah before Fajr. These two are the two best nawafil after the faridah. They're the best. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about the, uh, the witr, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, has favored upon you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as salah. This salah is more greater and better for you than a red camel. You know what the red camel meant to the Arabs? The red camel was a highly appreciated animal. It was very expensive, extremely expensive. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here is saying what? He's saying that this salah that Allah has given you subhanahu wa ta'ala and is bestowed upon you is better for you than that red camel that you guys look up to and you love and you appreciate. The sahabas, when that was said to them, they said, Qulna, we said, Wama hiya ya Rasulullah? What salah is this? What salah are you talking about? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Witr. The salah I'm talking about is Al-Witr. And then the Prophet mentioned to them what time is the witr prayed. He said, مَا بَيْنَ صَلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ إِلَىٰ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ It is prayed between the Salat al-Isha, i.e. when you finish the Salat al-Isha and you pray and you've concluded your Isha until طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ, until the sun rises, that's when you can pray it. Witr. يعني, from Isha to Fajr, you pray witr. And the witr is how many? One. According to the strongest opinion, it starts with one, and then three, and then five, and then seven. Ah. So the person can pray one. How are you going to miss it? It's only one rak'ah. خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعَمْ The Prophet is saying, it's better for you than a red camel. Salawatu Allah wa sallam alayhi. وَلِذَلِكَ Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the hadith al-Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, that Abu Huraira said, O Sani Khalili, my close friend gave me an advice. My close friend advised me. Nabi Allah Muhammad. O Sani Khalili, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my close friend advised me. And he advised me what? Bithalathin. Three things he advised me with. He told me to hold into these three. The first one is, صيام ثلاثة أيام من كل شهر. He said to me, fast three days in every single month. Abu Huraira, every month three days fast. The second thing he said was that I pray وأن أصلي صلاة الضحى. That I pray صلاة الضحى. Second. And the third advice, my Khalil, my close friend, he said, advised me is. وَأَنْ أُوْتِرَ قَبْلَ أَنْ أَنَامْ That I pray witr before I sleep. That I pray witr before I sleep. Abu Huraira said, these three, my Khalil advised me it. And Abu Huraira never left these three. He never left it. Because he knew how great the Salatu al-Witr was. وَلِذَلِكَ أَلِمَامُ أَحْمَدْ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ Salatu al-Witr. أَلِمَامُ أَحْمَدْ He said a very powerful statement. He said, Man taraka al witra. Anyone who leaves the witr. My beloved brothers and sisters pondered on this point. Man taraka al witra. Anyone who leaves the witr. Fawa rajulun su. And Imam Muhammad said, He is an evil man. And Imam Muhammad said, Rahimahullah, look at that. And Imam Muhammad said, Man taraka salat al witr. Anyone who leaves salat al witr. He is a what? And Imam Muhammad, he said, He is rajulun su. He's an evil man. لا ينبغي أن تقبل له شهادة. And Imam Ahmed said his witness and testimony should not be accepted. His testimony it should not be accepted. Why did Ahmed take it that far? And why was he so rigid on it like that? Because Ahmed, rahimahullah, knew 
that the humans are not perfect. Yani humans, our tabi'ah is that when we do things, sometimes we do it with perfection and sometimes we forget to do it with perfection and we're a bit deficient in doing some things. Yani so when you pray some salah, you may not do it properly. You may not pray properly. The ruku' isn't done properly. The conditions are not met properly. And so you're coming the day of judgment with an act that is not complete. It hasn't been done from all of its uh, sides. You didn't fully do what was required from you. And you didn't pray any sunnah. So you're going to come the day of judgment with deficient salah. See what Imam Ahmed is looking at. The sunnah, he was seeing it as a what? He was seeing the sunnah and the nawafil and the voluntary acts as a shield to save the person's wajibat. Okay? And the greatest one of them is al-witru. The second uh, salah or the second voluntary act a person should give a lot of importance to after the witr is sunnatul fajr. The sunnatul fajr, as our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it, that our mother Aisha, she said, لم يكن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he was not one على شيء من النوافل أشد تعاهدا منه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was not a person who gave or observed The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was not one who observed any voluntary act as much as he observed على ركعتي الفجر the two rak'ah of the fajr, the way he observed it, and the way he followed it, alayhi salatu salam, there was nothing like it, unprecedented. That's what our mother Aisha is saying. That he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the thing that he observed the most when it came to voluntary act was ala rak'atayi al-fajr. The two rak'ah of fajr, the Prophet would pray it. He would pray it safaran wa hadaran. Whether he was traveling alayhi salatu wasalam, or whether he was a resident, it didn't matter. He would pray those two rak'ah sunnah. Walidhalika the Prophet sallallahu went even on to saying, Rak'ata al-fajr khayru min al-dunya wa ma fiha. The two rak'ah of fajr, it is better than his dunya and everything that is in it. Rak'ata al-fajr khayru min al-dunya wa ma fiha. These two rak'ah of fajr, these two sunnah of fajr is better than everything in this dunya that we see today. It's better than this dunya and everything that is in it. I can imagine this world that we live in today, subhanAllah, all of the things that we have in there, all of the things that our minds and our hearts are inclined to and we want and we desire. These two rak'ah is better than it. So what we should inshaAllah ta'ala do at this moment again is that when we are praying Salatul Fajr, even if we're going to pray in the masjid, when inshallah ta'ala the masjids reopen again, the person should pray the two rak'ah in the house, rak'ah uh, al-fajr, and then go to the masjid. And now that you're isolated and we are uh, at home, then we should also pray those two rak'ah sunnah and then pray the fajr. So these two inshallah ta'ala, I want us to observe it. Let this moment inshallah ta'ala that you are isolated and you're at home and your, the social distancing is placing, taking place, make sure that you observe Salatul Witr and Rak'ata Al-Fajr. Make sure you observe the Witr and the Witr is, it can only be one, it can, it can be even one Rak'ah if you want and two Rak'ah Fajr. Look how much reward that you get from it and look how far you will go. Now inshallah ta'ala I'm going to go into the third introduction. The third introduction. Bithnillah al-Kareem. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.